He says here, now he, verse 21, now he which establishes us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. God did that, okay? Who has also sealed us and given the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. Now notice two things here. Number one, he has sealed us and given us the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. Now that word sealed is uh, the word picture there is how they used to seal a scroll with a wax seal so that you could tell if it was broken or not or had been opened and, and read before. Now, he has sealed us. I had a young man travel with me one time for a little bit, um, and he was saying, well, you know, Curry, what do you think about once saved, always saved? And then we had about six of us in the car, and we were driving, and he asked that question. And I told him, I said, I, ain't, I don't think about it. I don't want out. So I'm not worried about once saved, always saved, or losing your salvation. That guy said, I said, I don't think about it. I, I don't even consider that. I don't consider, but why? Because I don't see any statement in the Bible that says once saved, always saved. Right? Now, I'm not saying that there's not an application to it. I'm saying that I don't see that, that term. You know, well, guess what? Just because the term's not there doesn't mean the idea isn't there because there's also terms like rapture, which isn't in the Bible. The term rapture is not in the Bible, per se. The term trinity is not in the Bible. However, we know that some things like that that have terminology that we give a single word to, the, the concept is in the Bible, whether the actual word is or not. So whenever we talk about once saved, always saved, like I said, I, I'm, I never think about that. I never worry about that. I don't, I don't wonder, oh, well, I wonder if I'm saved. I hope I'm saved. I, you know, I just... I don't know, I'm just, you know, because I, I have messed up in my life and, you know, maybe God just didn't. No, that never crosses my mind. Why? Because I was taught early on, trust God. Why? I trust him. He will keep what I have committed to him. My job is to keep committed to him what I have committed to him. So I don't think about losing my salvation. I'm not, I don't walk around in fear, wondering, that kind of stuff. I don't go to bed and that, okay, God, if there's anything I've done that's going to, you know, if I die in my sleep, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to go to hell because I forgot to confess this sin or that thing. No. Now, if it's a sin, I expect the Holy Spirit to, to bring it to my attention. Why? Because I want to walk close to God and I don't want anything in between us. You know, you can have things between you. Even if you're in relationship, you can still have things between you. Isn't that right? Husband and wife, they're in relationship, but there can still be something between them. Right? And so it's the same thing with the Father. That's why he was talking about even all through the Old Testament about how Israel was like a bride, like a wife that committed adultery. Why? Well, because he said the people went whoring after other gods. That's pretty strong. That, that shows the relationship he wanted even back then. But now we are bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, that we'd say. And so now we are part of him. So I don't, I don't think about this. Now it says that he has sealed us and given us the earnest, that's a down payment, of the Spirit in our hearts. <clears throat> so we're not thinking about that. We have the down payment of the Spirit in our hearts, which means it's not everything there is to have. It means that we have the earnest. Now, we can have the fullness of God. Amen? And he, he desires us to walk in the fullness of God. At the same time, it says he gave us the earnest of the Spirit, or a down payment. In other words, so that we could operate now the way we're going to live then. That's why we have that. And so we can function now the way we will live then. Now we do it by faith. When we, at that point, we won't even have to use faith in that sense to see the blessings or the promises of God fulfilled in our life. 